Well, I think one of the most important things that PR can do is magnify good. It brings out the best in the brand and it's using the power of story. Today, discover why top experts are saying the eight second PR method can be the most effective yet most overlooked strategy you can use to explode brand exposure, get clients and drive sales in the new COVID economy. I'm Ken Newhouse. Building a profitable business isn't only about generating leads and driving sales. It's about who we are and what we're made of. It's about finding the most effective methods to persuade, inspire, and ignite the imagination of others so you can succeed in business. If you're a member of the new breed of entrepreneur, I invite you to join the quest as we reveal the newest and most effective methods you can use to get clients now. Are you struggling to create a breakthrough for your brand amidst the raging sea of competition? Would you like your brand story and marketing messaging to get featured in media like TV, radio, print outlets, and top-ranked podcasts so the marketplace can discover the amazing work you do? Would you like to learn how to land an interview on a national TV network with one email pitch? And would you like to have top influencers feature and recommend your brand, resulting in an immediate increase in marketplace awareness of your business? Listen, if you answered yes to any of those questions, (laughs) you're absolutely going to love today's episode because the answer to each of those questions the exact solutions you've been searching for can be found in your ability to tell a clear, concise, and compelling story that literally hooks the media. People like influencers, podcast hosts, people on platforms like Fox News and others literally hooks them on why your message is so important and why they have to tell it now. On today's episode, we're going to unveil the way to accomplish that and to grow your brand's authority in the marketplace utilizing the 8-Second PR Story Energizer process. The 8-Second PR Story Energizer is a method of PR that some top experts are saying could be the most effective yet most overlooked strategy you can use to get clients and drive sales in the new COVID economy, which a lot of us are finding more difficult than ever. Now, During today's conversation, you're also going to discover eight PR superpowers. Everybody loves to talk about their superpowers, but today you're going to discover eight PR superpowers you can deploy quickly and easily to help you score more earned media. What the world's earned media? Well, if you want to be interviewed on Fox News or if you want to be interviewed or featured on a podcast by an influencer or maybe on Instagram or on YouTube, one of those channels or in national print media, those are the type of platforms I'm talking about when I talk about earned media. And you're going to learn how to get exposure and in fact, a lot of it during today's conversation. And if you're like me and my most successful clients, the response to your marketing efforts, simply not what it used to be. In fact, marketing has become in the middle of this COVID economy we find ourselves in, the new COVID economy. Marketing has become so challenging for some of us that it has dramatically increased the cost of acquisition for new clients, right? It's cutting directly into our profit. It's eviscerating our margins. And it's not just COVID that's causing this. There are many reasons for this, but one of the biggest, in addition to the COVID crisis, is caused by what many experts refer to as the quote-unquote perfect storm, which has resulted in the massive increases in competition, i.e. all the noise in the marketplace, all the voices in the marketplace, combined with our ever-decreasing attention spans. You know, if you consider the fact that the human attention span was 12 seconds as we entered the 21st century, what's really scary about this trend is that it's projected by the year 2025 that the human attention span will struggle to break seven seconds. So it's getting more difficult as every day goes by to not only grab the attention of your perfect prospects, your ideal clients, but to hold it. And what that means is that decreasing attention spans coupled with a super saturated internet, and as everybody knows, the internet's bursting at the seams with information, most of which is useless drivel. The combination of those two things has resulted in the lowest marketing response rates in history. But in spite of that not so exciting news, I don't want to depress you, but in spite of that, the overlooked and underutilized eight second PR strategy you're going to learn about on today's conversation can make your brand story magnetic and irresistible to your perfect prospects, which should excite you because it can help you generate clients and drive sales for your business faster than you ever imagined possible. Most of us have never considered, never pursued, never tried to get PR like earned media. None of us, including me. And that's been a mistake. But I'm here to tell you that the eight second PR method can help you craft a wow story for your brand that literally creates like fairy dust. It's going to create an emotional connection with your ideal clients and your perfect prospects. The kind of emotional connection I'm talking about is the emotional connection that millions and millions of people feel towards their favorite superhero characters. You know, think about it. These superheroes, people like Iron Man, you know, Tony Stark and Iron Man, you got Superman, you've got Spider-Man, you've got the Incredible Hulk, which... I always thought was a bad guy, but now apparently part of the Avengers, he's a good guy. 
You got all these different superhero characters that are driving millions and millions and millions of box office sales, but they're also being featured at events like Comic-Con. These are conventions held around the globe that have hundreds of millions of fans. So if your goal is to get booked, if your goal is to get interviewed or featured by top media outlets, which it should be, in light of all that we know about the difficulty and the challenges and the increasing expenditure or investment, as it were, in marketing your business, you should be highly focused on gaining as much earned media as possible. And if that's your objective, if that's your goal, and if that's something that you definitely want to do, you're absolutely going to love today's episode because you're going to learn how to magnify your brand with the 8-Second PR Framework which can help you become the most irresistible, most sought after, and most in-demand consultant in the marketplace. One example during the conversation we're going to cover today is how to use your media superhook superpower to connect with influencers, podcast hosts, and reporters. With the insights that you're going to discover on today's conversation, you're going to be able to get more attention from influencers as well as book more interviews on top-ranked podcasts. Listen, if you can get on a top-ranked podcast, the podcast, and this is important, podcast that your perfect prospects, your ideal clients love to listen to. Getting booked and interviewed on those podcasts is literally your keys to the kingdom. So in addition to being interviewed on top ranked podcasts and being connected with influencers, you're also going to learn how to be interviewed on news programs, national magazines, and radio shows. Yes, people still watch the news. People still read national magazines. Your clients are still reading those things and they're still listening to the radio. And so as you listen to today's conversation and you discover the eight PR superpowers we're going to discuss, I want you to imagine how deploying these superpowers in your business can help you enjoy explosive growth, helping you reach your ultimate media success goals easier and faster than you ever thought possible. And if you're like me, you probably never thought about your media goals. You probably never had goals about, hey, I want to be interviewed on Fox. I want to be featured on the YouTube channel of this one influencer. I want this one influencer on Instagram to do a story on me. I want to be interviewed on this top-ranked podcast that all of my prospects, everybody in the marketplace looks up to. They're a thought leader. I want to be on that person's show and be the featured guest. And if that's something that appeals to you, again, you're absolutely going to love today's episode because that is exactly what you're going to learn during today's conversation. Hi, I'm Ken Newhouse, and I want to welcome you to episode 394 of the Get Clients Now podcast. My guest today is Liz H. Kelly. She's the author of 8 Second PR, Energize Your Story for Ultimate Media Success, the PR book that holds the title of second most copy sold on Amazon for three consecutive years. So this is a book that's definitely getting lots of attention on Amazon. Now, I know most of my listeners know who Liz Kelly is, but if you don't know who Liz Kelly is, let me just tell you. Liz Kelly is the CEO and founder of Goody PR. She's an award-winning author of the book I just mentioned, Eight Second PR, Energize Your Story for Ultimate Media Success. She has 15 plus years of public relations and marketing experience. She's passionate about magnifying brands, experts, and causes through integrated marketing campaigns with a powerful and timely story. Her work's been featured on CNN. Check out this laundry list. CNN, ABC News, Fox News, USA Today. Not local channels. These are national channels. The Chicago Tribune, Thrive Global, BuzzFeed, KTLA, KCBS, BBC Radio, ESPN Radio, NPR, and thousands, not hundreds, thousands of media outlets around the world. Kelly also teaches digital marketing at UCLA Extension and is a Social Media Club Los Angeles board member. So if you're ready to discover how you can use the 8-second PR story energizer process, as well as the associated tools and strategies to become the most recognized, most sought after, most in-demand consultant in the marketplace, let's dive into the recent conversation I had with PR marketing superstar, Liz H. Kelly. So Liz, it's awesome to have you on the show today on behalf of myself and members of the Get Clients Now Nation. I want to welcome you to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. So your book, you got this awesome book. We're going to dive into the book here. That's going to be the meat of the show today. There's tremendous value. Yeah, hold that up again (laughs) so people can see it. Hold it steady for me. So the title is Eight Second PR, Energize Your Story for Ultimate Media Success. And it's called eight second PR because the average attention span of an adult is eight seconds. So it's really about getting to the point and getting your story across in a clear, concise, and compelling way. As with every guest I have on the show, whether it's a book or coaching program, this is a book worthy of not only your money, but the investment of your time. So obviously the book is guaranteed. Invest in her book, utilize it, deploy it. You'll get tremendous benefit out of the book. If not, don't worry about contacting Amazon to return it. Email me at customer service at kennewhouse.com. 
and I will personally reimburse you for the book. You can keep the book or give it away, but that won't be the case because it's an awesome book. And it's a manual. It's not just a one-time read. There's so much information in this book. You're going to need to actually sit down and do the work. It's not like a magic book where you lay it on the coffee table and then just, you know, new clients run into your business and CNN, well, not CNN, but people that you would want to call you end up calling you. That's not going to happen. There are some steps you have to take, but you've made them so simple and so easy. But before we dive into that, take a minute or two. I'm sure some of my listeners don't know who you are. Take a minute or two. Give us your backstory. Bring us up to speed with what we need to know so we can get the interview going in the right direction. Absolutely. Well, I think, you know, my backstory, I promise not to make it lengthy because I'm about getting to the point. But when I was nine years old, we used to do puppet shows in my basement and I would direct them and I would have a great time coming up with the story. So I don't know if that's where it all started with the backstory, but uh, you fast forward. I worked in the corporate world, worked at Paramount, worked at Sprint PCS, and then got laid off and decided to write a book. And I wrote a book that was about dating and that ended up getting 500 media interviews. So after 500 media interviews for myself over five years, I said, okay, I I need to do this for other people. So I started Goody PR, it's goodypr.com. And now I work with clients all over the country, really all over the world to help magnify their story and tell their story in lots of different ways, because that's really what it's about. It's not just, you know, you launch a book and it's over in three months. That 500 interviews was over five years. So you really want to keep reinventing the story to make it topical and timely. Yeah, you've done a fabulous job with it. I want to do something that just popped into my head. I don't normally do this, but I have a list of questions. And this question kind of dovetails perfectly with what you just said. So I'm going to ask it now. It deals with a quote from Richard Branson that you included you included in the book. And here's the quote. I'm going to read it so I get it correct. He said, publicity is absolutely critical. A good PR story is infinitely more effective than a front page ad. And what I would like to know is, what's the difference between, let's say, running a, a real awesome Facebook campaign where we spend tons of money versus PR. What are the differences, the key differences between those two? Well, that is a great question. And thanks for sharing that quote from Richard Branson. It really is all about having a good story. And so the way I explain it is there is paid media, which is what you put with a Facebook campaign and you actually pay for it, or the front page of the New York Times. And then there's earned media. And earned media is you earn the right to have someone else tell your story or somebody else vouch for you. And that's what we're doing today. And I really appreciate you highlighting my book and telling that story. So that's earned media. And that's what you want with TV, radio, print, and podcast interviews. And the way I'd like to explain it is if somebody says, hey, I read this really good book, you're much more likely to read that book versus if you just see an ad on Amazon. So, you know, what's going to be more valuable? They say if you do a TV interview, it's three times the value. And so, for example, if you do an interview and let's say it's three minutes, and let's say if you were going to buy ad time, it would cost $10,000. The publicity value is actually 30000 That's amazing. And you know, the irony of this is that many years ago, when I first started in earnest as a direct response copywriter, we used to write something called advertorials. So we would write copy in the form of an ad that looked like it was an article or a feature in the newspaper. And then the newspapers got smart and they started putting the word advertisement all around that. Because otherwise people would think, you know, we would use the same font, the same layout style as the newspaper. The newspaper people got smart pretty quickly and uh, didn't allow us to do that anymore. They didn't want people to be confused and think it was something they were endorsing the product or service or whatever it was. But uh, it's very effective. A good PR campaign is priceless because you're getting the endorsement of what's considered in most instances, I would imagine, a credible media source. Although journalism is in question today, people still look at PR making you much more credible. Here's a good example of the reverse. Someone is accused of a crime they're accused, maybe not even charged by the police. What do people think about them the moment they see that on television or online or read it in the newspaper or wherever? They immediately assume that person is guilty because it was in a media source. It wasn't an ad. It was in the media source. And so effective, good, legitimate PR 
is just as powerful, but in a very positive way. And Liz's book shows you how to tap into that resource and leverage and use that resource for your business. And we're going to dive into that today. Typically, I like to ask this next question, Liz, but I'm going to put a spin on it because I think it's going to really help my listener a lot. What's something about PR that even your best clients may not know? Something that's very big, something that's impactful. What's something about PR that most people don't know, but you'd like them to know? Well, that's a great question. I think the biggest thing that people struggle with is they want to promote their shiny object. And it's not about the shiny object. It's about the story. So what I mean by that is I get somebody who calls me and says, I have a new book and I just want people to read the book. Well, that doesn't work because what they want is the story. So for example, I have a client that has a leadership book. Well, there's a lot of leadership books out there. So I have to personalize the story to his background, which is he's run global pharmaceutical companies around the world, and he's been a servant leader. And there are other people that talk about servant leaders, but he's also African-American. So that is something that's very topical right now, too. So, for example, for that same person, he uses Martin Luther King as an example in his book. So for Martin Luther King weekend, which was recently, I pitched him to CNN. I said, I have an African-American author. He can talk about how Martin Luther King was a servant leader and that he taught us to lead with love. And the country really needs a lot of healing right now. And so that lead with love, I got a response within five minutes. He was booked. And I, I've never seen that. I've never seen that for national TV. So it wasn't about the book. It was about the perfect story with the perfect speaker at the perfect time. Obviously, you're really big on PR, right? So how does a person get to be really big on PR and the benefits? You got like 500 different interviews over the course of five years. But were you big on PR before that? Or did the fact that you just kind of fell into this. How did you get to be so locked in and dialed in on utilizing PR and helping so many people? Well, that's a great story and great question. You know, when I got laid off from the corporate world and I decided to write this book, which a lot of people are writing books right now during the pandemic because they're home and they want to be doing a project. And it's a great thing to do. I really took it on like a full-time job and I started networking with people and I started saying, how do you write a good book? How do you write a good story? What's a good seminar to go to? And I ended up at Mark Victor Hansen, who wrote the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. I ended up at his mega book marketing, which he also co-hosted with Jack Canfield, who's another mega author and the co-author for Chicken Soup for the Soul books. Anyway, so Mark and Jack had all these incredible speakers and they talked about how you put it all together and how you use different tools to promote whatever it is, your brand or your book. And so I really embraced it. I just became obsessed. You have to really become obsessed with trying to figure out different ways to reinvent that story and different people to approach. That's really how it started. And I met so many authors at that seminar and some of the people in that room sent me to media coaches. Those people really helped me. They're still my friends. One of the media coaches wrote the foreword for my book. So it just really was diving in head first. So you mentioned effective PR requires that we tell a clear, concise, compelling story. We have a couple different frameworks within the book that help us build that. But what are two or three elements from like a 30,000 foot view of a clear, concise and compelling story versus one that's not? Absolutely. Well, I think one of the most important things is obviously get to the point as fast as possible. And one of the things that I also really like that is very impactful is talking in threes. So what I mean by that is clear, concise, and compelling is three things. And when you watch TV and you watch the news and you watch these pundits, which I do all the time to listen and observe, I'm, I'm watching differently than most people because I'm checking out who is getting to the point and who is getting things across immediately. So a story is good, but it's got to be a short story. You've got to get to the punchline immediately. A lot of people struggle with that. 
And so, for example, I had a client on CNN about Martin Luther King Day. We did media coaching. We did practicing the day before. And he was telling a story about Martin Luther King three minutes into his point. And I said, you know, the whole interview, the reason why they're having you on is because it's Martin Luther King weekend. So in the first sentence, say Martin Luther King was a servant leader who taught us how to lead with love. And so that's a really right. important thing that I think people have to think about because TV goes so fast. Are you talking about when you actually pitch the person, when you're pitching your PR, like your PR presentation, whether it's through email or through face-to-face, -face, telephone, whatever it might be, you know, for lack of a better term, you need to be able to encapsulate that into like an elevator pitch. I hate that term elevator pitch, but it needs to be tightly packaged, compelling, and energized. Yes? Yes, yes. And I think... Just to add on to what I was saying, it's not just for TV that you have to be clear, concise, and compelling and get to the point. It's every communication. It's every interview. For example, an email, the subject line has to get to the point immediately, and the first sentence are the most important. And I will spend hours just on getting that right. It doesn't happen immediately. And then it's the same thing when you're writing a column. Like if you're writing a column for Entrepreneur Magazine, I used to work with a client who did this and they would struggle getting to the point. I'm like, no, you can't get to the punchline in the third paragraph. You have to get it in the first paragraph so that they will keep reading. Yeah, that's just like with good copy. It's called your lead. Your headline grabs their attention from the headline. The job of the headline is to get them to read the first sentence, which is your part of your lead. And that sucks them into your copy. Same with what you're talking about, which is awesome. Can you give us an example of someone who utilized PR to really explode their business? Obviously, you gave us yourself. You gave us the client of yours who you just got on CNN. But can you give us maybe like a coach or a consultant or somebody along those lines, small business owner who utilized PR, you know, you help them and it just really helped their business to just explode? Sure. Well, I worked with a, uh, a client in Arizona and they had an addiction center and addiction impacts so many people. And there's always things on the news and they offer to be experts that would talk about whatever was happening in the news. That's very important to tie into whatever is the headline. So when things would happen like uh, opiates or bath salts or, you know, alcohol abuse, Anything like that, we would get the expert on television. We also did print and radio, but we ended up with 53 television interviews over five years, which is a lot. It was mostly local. They have one national out of the 53, and they ended up having the business being bought and bought by the top company in the addiction space, and they bought it for the brand name. So they did not change that name. And really, the PR made all the difference in getting that brand awareness out and the brand name. Now, they subsequently took the money from that and bought another addiction center. And that addiction center is called Warriors Heart, Warriors with an S, warriorsheart.com. And they specialize in addiction treatment for military veterans and first responders. I worked with the team. I always say it's a team effort to get these major interviews, but they were on the Today Show and we can talk more about that. But that Today Show, ever since they've been on the Today Show, they've had a waiting list and now they're expanding and they just bought a hotel that they're using for sober living. When you think about PR, and I'm going to confine your answer, I just want a gut visceral response here. I want one or two words. When you think about PR and what it can do to explode someone's business. We're in the new COVID economy. People aren't spending money like they were. Economic outlook for the country is not nearly as good as it was before COVID and when we had a different administration. People are concerned, so they're not as quick to spend money on marketing. Their response is not as good as it was. And so in light of all that, when you think of PR, and what it can do over and above for a person's business directly compared to, say, running internet marketing campaigns or doing direct mail, which both are awesome if you know how to utilize them. What one or two words come to mind when you think about PR and the explosive results it can give a business owner? 
Well, I think one of the most important things that PR can do is magnify good. It brings out the best in the brand and it's using the power of story. And the power of story is, that's how people communicate. You know, when I wanted to become a better copywriter, I started studying stories. So I've had a lot of people on the podcast who are expert story crafters, best-selling authors on how to do story. It's not easy to do. It's an art form and there's a science behind it. But I'll tell you what, it has improved my copy tremendously. And, you know, just based on going through your book, the stuff you taught on story, a lot of it I knew. Some of it, it was just like, wow, what a revelation. This is amazing, amazing story-based stuff. And actually you have a framework, a whole entire framework based on story, which I thought was cool. We'll get to that in a minute. But let me ask you this. What's your number one tip for attracting positive PR for your brand via TV, radio, print, or let's say even podcast interviews? I think the number one tip for PR is it really is all about the story. And it's all about being open-minded to telling a good story because a lot of people, again, they, they think that they should just get PR because they've got a cool, shiny object, and it, it doesn't work that way. One of the tips I learned from, say, Mark Victor Hansen was you have to entertain and educate, and that's really important. So you want to tell a good story, you want to be entertaining, but you've got to educate by offering really helpful tips. So that probably would be a top tip. We obviously have to pitch in order to get the PR, in order to get the exposure on television, on a podcast. A lot of today is podcast. Any form of media, whether it's written, print media. I've been contributing to Dentaltown now for over 10 years. So I know that can be difficult, but you may have an amazing story, but you also be, have to be able to pitch that. So what are some of the key components? Your story that you would, I guess, tell during the interview is not the same as your pitch story. I want you to break that down because I think sometimes my listener might get confused with that. What's the difference between a really powerful, compelling pitch story, the story you're going to use to pitch your idea or your story to be interviewed versus the actual story you're going to tell while you're being interviewed? Okay, that's a great question. There's a pitch story and then the story behind the story. So the pitch story is what is timely and what is relevant. So for example, I had a World War II book and we got them a lot of interviews around Veterans Day. So the pitch was how that book was relevant because it's Veterans Day and also about the survivors in the book. But the backstory, which is to me even more interesting, is how the book was created by the author. And it's about his father's platoon in the Pacific and it took him nine years to research the book and put it together. So you're pitching the timeliness with a timely hook, but it's the backstory that adds the personality and adds so much more. Let's do this. Let's dive in a little bit of the meat of the book. You develop something called the eight step story energizer process. Obviously we don't have time to go through all. From a 30,000 foot view, what is the eight step story energizer process and give us like one or two of the steps in it and talk about some of the amazing benefits this process, this framework will help my listener get. Great question. So the eight step story energizer process is really a step-by-step -step that I cover in the book. And it, it walks you through the process of how do you build the story? How do you get your digital media set up? And then how do you build compelling content? And then later in the process is how do you magnify that story once you get an interview? Because once you get an interview, you want to get that same story to as many media as possible. Let's say as an example, I just finished my book, Profitable Podcast Blueprint. I haven't uploaded it onto Amazon yet. I've been giving away free chapters on the show. When I first started podcasting, I thought, you know, this is going to be easy. I do platform speaking. I sell five-figure coaching programs from the front of the room effectively. I'm not afraid to talk in front of people. I'm going to build this huge audience because I had a really big following already on Dentaltown, but I went after a slightly different audience and it was crickets. So, but I made the commitment to do this for 12 months. I put it in writing and I told everybody, I'm going to podcast for 12 months. We're going to see what happens. And I figured by like month two, I would be like knocking it out of the park. Well, that didn't happen. It took me 11 months before I got my first client from podcasting. And so as a result, how would I take a story? Let's say that you got me. I, I don't like CNN, so I have to use something else. But let's say even the local media or like a podcast featured in podcast magazine. 
how would I take that featured article of me in Podcast Magazine and leverage that based on what you teach in the book? Absolutely. Well, what I would do first is I would send out a press release announcing that you were in Podcast Magazine. And then I would send a pitch to other media and other podcasts. And then I would do a video to talk about it. I would post everything on social media all over the place. I'd post it especially on LinkedIn because that's where a lot of your core audience probably is. And maybe write a story about what top tips you have for how to get into Podcast Magazine. You know, there's all this talk today among marketers, especially online, of their quote unquote superpowers. And, you know, on one hand, it is quite irritating to hear people talk about their quote unquote superpowers. But on the other hand, you know, some of that's legit. I mean, some people actually have a gift or a talent or an ability. I don't call them superpowers. They're just really good at something. And, you know, they want to call it a superpower. Let's call it a superpower because essentially when you get, you know, down to brass tacks, that's what it is. In the book, you talk about eight different types of superpowers we can have as it relates to PR. Can you talk for a minute or two about the wow storytelling superpower? And then right after that, the media hook superpower, because the media hook one really grabbed me and the storytelling one grabbed me as well. Sure. Well, I think the wow storytelling superpower is probably the most important because that builds the foundation for the brand. And so you really have to spend time on that and I spend hours with clients and I call it uh, digging for the story gold because a lot of times they can't even see the story gold. For example, I had a client who's a top realtor and she didn't really call herself a top realtor. And then I said, are you in the top 1%? And she said, yes. And so then we did a press release about the top 1% realtor and put in her name and we got so many interviews just because people were Googling for a top 1% realtor. So that really popped her story. She also had, I call it VIP customer service, because if somebody sold a house, she would actually take their stuff to the Salvation Army for them. I don't know any realtors that do that besides her, but she would really go out of her way and get all these vendors and you know the painter and the landscaper for anybody selling a house. So we turned it into VIP customer service. And then the media hook superpower is really about having that timely story, that timely hook that just makes it right at the right time. And that can be really hard because you've got to find a great timely hook. So for example, the International Women's Day is coming up in March. So right now I'm working with a client on a campaign because she wrote a book about how to break the glass ceiling. She worked for Lloyd's of London and some other really top companies where she was mostly with men. And so it's very timely for International Women's Day, but you've got to think in advance. You can't just do it that day. It's too late if it's that day. There's so many parallels between what you do and direct response copywriting. It was Robert Collier who said back in 1933 in his book, the Robert Collier Letter Book. He said, enter the conversation your prospects are having. When you write copy, and the same thing goes with your superpower, the, you know, the media hook superpower, to enter into the conversation that's going on in the media. And in today's environment, that could be changing minute to minute. It literally can change like that fast. And so you got to be on top of your toes. I think looking at a marketing calendar, not a marketing calendar, but a calendar with all kinds of quirky holidays is a good place to start. I mean, you just mentioned, I guess it's a holiday or day that, you know, women in business celebrate. Um, you know, there's all kinds of, there's ice cream day. There's all kinds of weird holidays you can use and you can tie that in. I've done that in the past, tie your marketing headline in because it's a conversation. It has to be relevant though. So your target prospect, your ideal customer that you're searching for, that has to mean something to them. And I think that's an awesome point. And you go into much more detail in the book about it, which I really appreciate it. What's the one question that I should have asked today? There are like a bazillion more questions I want to ask. We just simply don't have time in the constraints of a podcast. But what's that one important question that you think would benefit my listener that I didn't ask today that I should have asked? I think the one most important question that might help is the importance of follow-up. I think a lot of people don't understand that just because you have an interview doesn't mean it's going to be published. 
So you really have to follow up. And what I advise people to do is be patient and persistent and never desperate. It's just like dating. Because if you push too hard, the story may never see the light of day. That's another good analogy. I love the analogies you bring up about dating because one of the analogies I love to use, whether I'm working with a new client or in a group coaching setting, and I'm teaching them how to actually do a presentation successfully with a prospective new client, customer, or new patient prospect is the following analogy. I say, imagine this scenario. Imagine you're a guy and you're meeting a gal or you're a gal meeting a guy for the first date and you're sitting at Starbucks and you're having a great time. And then she pulls out a notepad and she said, and you're like, what is that? And she's like, well, uh, I've written down the names of the eight children we're going to have. I've got the address of the house we're going to live in. And we're going to drive after we leave here, we'll drive there. Uh, but before we actually drive by the house where we're going to move to after we get married, I want to actually uh, take you by my parents' house so you can meet my folks. That's the analogy I give when I talk to people about don't sound desperate. Don't be too pushy. Don't come across as needy. And it's a definite skill, but I think it's a fabulous point that you bring out. And I know it's going to help a lot of people. Tell us more about your business. What's your website URL? How can we get in contact with you? What's the best way for people to get in touch with you who want to work with you? Because I know there are going to be people who are really into this PR idea. I know I am. I have some questions once we're done with the interview, but tell us what we need to know. Well, I would love to hear from the listeners. I would love to work with you and help magnify your story. So the best way to reach me is just go to Goody. It's with a Y, GoodyPR.com. And then you can email info at GoodyPR.com or follow me anywhere on social media with Liz H. It's initial H, Liz H. Kelly, K-E-L-O-Y. And I'm on there a lot. So I would love to talk to you. And, you know, we all need help including me. I ask my friends all the time and coworkers for input. So I'd love to hear from you and help you. And Goody is G-O-O-D-Y, not G-O-O-D-I-E, G-O-O-D-Y, P is in Paul, R is in Ralph, dot com, goodypr.com, right? And then info at goodypr.com. Exactly. And you can go to 8secondpr.com to see more about the book but my business is the goodypr.com. Are there any dashes or anything in the eight second PR, like on the cover of your book? There is a dash on the cover, but not in the website. And if you go to Amazon, you can find it with eight second PR. Hey, listen, you did an awesome job. Thanks for being on the show today. I know it's going to be awesome. Well, thank you, Ken. Great questions. And I hope I'm able to help your audience. Get clients now. Framing your brand's marketing messages and story in a way that's magnetic and irresistible to not only podcast hosts, but influencers as well as those in the media is a skill set that can literally explode the growth and profitability of your business like nothing else. As a result, over the last few years, we've had several conversations about how to craft the ultimate story for your business and how to leverage the power of your story with highly targeted magnetic messaging that appeals to your perfect prospects. An episode that dovetails perfectly with today's conversation is episode 376 with my good friend, Neil Schaefer. And in that conversation, Schaefer revealed his step-by-step -step framework for approaching and building solid relationships with influencers, because when you can do that, you'll find yourself with an abundance and absolute never-ending supply of high-value clients to be able to drive sales and increase profit in your business faster and easier than you ever thought possible. You know, without question, Schaefer's become one of the leading voices today on influencer marketing. And over the last five years, he's written three best-selling books on that exact subject. So if finding, targeting, building relationships with influencers and having them promote your business is important to you, episode 376 is one you're going to want to pay close attention to. I'd also recommend episode 367 with Bob Berg, author of The Go-Giver and The Go-Giver Influencer. And during that conversation, Berg revealed how to rise above the competition and sell more in troubled times, which included his most effective methods for improving brand recognition and increasing your credibility and trust in the marketplace, both vital skills to possess when you decide to use PR strategies to grow your brand's online reach, as we discussed in today's conversation. Episode 367 with Bob Berg for that. And then finally, I'd recommend episode 349 with my good friend, David J.P. Phillips. In that episode... Philip shared the secret behind the huge success of his recent TEDx presentation, The Magical Science of Storytelling, a presentation that to date has generated over, listen to this, 7 million views on YouTube. 
And in that conversation, Phillips revealed his three-step process for crafting a powerful brand story that is magnetic and irresistible to those in the media, to influencers, and hosts of top-ranked podcasts, the most important people you want to reach when you decide to use the PR strategies we covered in today's conversation with Liz Kelly. All those experts you can find on the KenNewhouse.com website. And remember, we're launching the free membership portal we've been building for you on March 1st, 2021. So just a few weeks away where you're going to be able to search the entire library of conversations we've had over the last several years on a variety of topics that'll help you bring more high value clients into your consulting business and keep them for a lifetime. Also, remember that the first 100 people to register on March 1st are going to get a free copy of the updated version of my book, Profitable Again, as well as a copy of my newest book, Profitable Podcast Blueprint, which is going to be available on Amazon sometime next week. So when you decide to register for the free membership on KenNewhouse.com, you're going to have instant access to each one of the conversations I've had with my guests, conversations which will be organized by topic, plus... You're going to get access to my weekly strategy guide for consultants every Wednesday with special resources I know are going to be very, very helpful for you and your business. You're also going to get instant access to the notes from that week's episode, my own personal library, the member cast, and all of the free video and audio trainings that'll be available for you on the website. And speaking of amazing content, my guest next week is David Fields, author of two books, two best-selling books, actually two of the best-selling books on consulting on all of Amazon. The first book, which is going to be the primary topic of our conversation, is The Irresistible Consultant's Guide to Winning Clients, Six Steps to Unlimited Clients and Financial Freedom, and then his second book, The Executive's Guide to Consultants, How to Find, Hire, and Get Great Results from Outside Experts. Listen to what Keith Ferrazzi, founder of Ferrazzi Greenlight, former CMO of Deloitte Consulting, and author of the number one New York Times bestsellers, Who's Got Your Back and Never Eat Alone, wrote the foreword to the book the irresistible consultant. And here's what he said about fields. If you're anything like me, you want to multiply your impact on the world by spreading the gift of your knowledge to an ever widening roster of clients. That's the promised land and David's guide will lead you there. Marshall Goldsmith, one of the world's leading consultants and coaches wrote the forward to Fields' second book, the executive's guide to consultants. And in his opinion, fields is without question an individual who can transform your consulting practice into an industry leader. So join me for a conversation next week as we discuss six steps to unlimited clients and financial freedom with my guest, David A. Fields. Our objective with this podcast is to help you and your business stand out in the marketplace by crystallizing your messaging, marketing, and communications. On behalf of the whole Ken Newhouse team, thanks for listening.